Hi, it's Bridget. Welcome to Above Life Channel. The purpose here is to inspire your spirit and to fill you with hope. Today, we're going to have a conversation with one of my favorite people, or former people. I'm one of my favorite former people, Marilyn Monroe in the afterlife. Hey, Mary, come on in. Oh, hi, honey. She's like, hi, honey. Nice to see you. Hey, hi. Oh, thank you. She just said, oh, I like your hair. I'm like, oh, thank you. I just kind of must it up a little bit. It's getting a little kind of long and stuff, you know. So, oh, you should grow it and then you should curl it. She says, it looks so beautiful, Bridget. It looks so beautiful. Thank you. Oh, you're so sweet. You are so sweet. Okay, Mare, here's the deal. I have some stuff I want to talk to you about. And I've channeled some people that you know, so I think we should talk about them and whatever else kind of comes up, okay? And I also have some afterlife stuff I wanna just ask you in general, maybe you can shed some light on uh, to help us understand the afterlife better because I think for myself and for the viewers, we'd like to know a little more about how some of that works, you know? And I know some of it, we, we can't know everything, but I'd love to, you know, kind of talk about that a little bit, okay? Sure, sure, she says, sure, sure. Where do you wanna start? Um, hmm, good question. Oh, okay, so let's talk about your life. Can we talk about your life for a second? Yes, isn't that what we're here to talk about? <laughs> she says, um, I recently channeled Robert Kennedy. And if you guys wanna see that, there's a playlist for the Kennedys. A whole host of them are on there. You can watch those videos. She says, and they're very good. She says, they're very good. <laughs> Thank you. And so I know that your relationship with him was different than the relationship with John Kennedy, the, the former president. And I think that people in the just general public focus more on your relationship with, with Jack Kennedy than they do on your relationship with Bobby. And so I wanted to ask you about your relationship with Bobby, if that's okay with you. Oh, yes, yes. She says, yes, yes. And then she says, do I kiss and tell? And she says, well, you can see everything anyway, so it really doesn't matter. <laughs> She's like, I'm not gonna tell you something that you don't already know already, Bridget. <laughs> I'm like, you're right. <laughs> All right, so in my conversation with, with Bobby, I got the feeling that he does have and did have feelings for you, you know, really genuine, loving, kind feelings for you. He's such a dear, dear man, such a kind man, such such a loving family man i mean and so beautiful don't you think he would have do he would just make the most beautiful children the most beautiful children well he had children he had several children and a wife yes yes i know don't they all seem to have children and wives doesn't that doesn't that just seem so terribly unfair well hmm i suppose from your perspective it might yes how did you feel about Bobby Kennedy? And is there a difference between your relationship with Jack Kennedy and Bobby Kennedy? Oh, yes, yes. Jack was rather, he was rather rude to me. He broke it off very abruptly. Oh, I tried to persuade him, but he, he's such a magnetic man, you know? He has such a charisma about him. So many women would just, fawn over him and and it's very understandable you know very understandable a man with such so much power and so such a uh, a smart mind so smart he was such a smart minded man but he really wasn't working looking for anything more than just a girl on the side and My relationship with Bobby started rather innocently, you could say, very, very much, uh, Bobby was very much a middleman, but was still always so kind to me, even when I wanted to see Jack, and he listened, he actually listened. That is something that a girl wants, a man to actually listen to her. He made me feel very smart, very intelligent, and he didn't question my feelings or, or put, put me down. He, 
he rather enjoyed my passion and and wanted to know my thoughts on things and I think I gave him permission too to to not have the pressures that he had in Washington or, or at home with his own family. He could be much more comfortable around me and maybe have a little more fun, you know? Mm. I could see that. I could see that. Mm -hmm. I could definitely see that. So I have another question, Marilyn. Um, it's said that you have had journals that you've written and I know that you have in fact on my little rolling desk I have here that I put my stuff on I have a, a book of yours let me just see if I can sneak it out here you guys this was on my nightstand for a long long time I haven't read all of it but this book I actually did a vlog on this book a long time ago and isn't it awesome it's called fragments Poems, Intimate Notes, Letters by Marilyn Monroe. It's edited by Stanley, uh, let's see, Butcho, Butcho, and Bernard Comet. So when I mean, there's a lot of really cool, oh, hey, here's a book right here. I just opened it up. A picture of a journal right there. I should put a link to this below. I'll put a link to this book below, you guys. I'll put an Amazon link, that'll be good. Um, so it said that you've written, so it's obvious that you've written. Yes, yes, kept a lot of journals. Yes, no, it's always writing, always writing, she says. It kept me sane, you know? Kept me out of my head so that the thoughts wouldn't, wouldn't um, take over me, you know? They wouldn't um, corrupt me. And it's better just to get them out, get them out on paper. Many therapists use that, you know, as a, a talk, instead of talking, you, it's sort of like talking, but you just write it all down and you write it all down so that you don't have to think about it again. And then you can always come back to it if you need to. What did you often go back to your notes and things? Oh, I suppose at times I did, but it was more to just not, not as a record, but as a, a form of therapy, you know? I think if I would have kept all those thoughts in my head, all those words in my head, I would have just about had my mind explode, you know? So you were definitely a thinker. I feel like it's worry, Mayor, I gotta say. Oh well, yes, I suppose you would consider it nowadays anxiety or depression or mood swings or bipolar or whatever you would call it. I don't know. I don't know. I'm not a psychiatrist, although you think I could be one after seeing them so many times and so many different therapists. You'd think I could be an expert on that now. So, so did you keep notes of your conversations with the Kennedys? Oh, yes. Yes, I did. And they knew that I did. When I made mention of it, Bobby was very upset. He was rather upset. He was rather startled. He seemed very, very surprised. So why did you keep notes of your, well, a girl likes to journal. A girl has a diary, right? A girl has a diary. She says, I always wrote down my thoughts and things. It was just normal. It was natural for me. It was normal. It wasn't anything, I wasn't trying to get dirt on them or anything like that. And, and I wanted to remember things and replay our conversations over and over when, because I couldn't see them all the time. I couldn't talk to them all the time. It was, it was very, very difficult. You know, people that are in the public like that, it's, they're very, very important men. And, and you can't always reach them by phone and you have things you want to say and you want to remember what you want to tell them. And so this is, this is how I did, this is how I did. I didn't do it for any other reason. I think people think that, that maybe I was going to, you know, hold it over them or things, but that was not the case. And that was not the case, not, not at all. So did you have like a, there was talk that after your death or something that there was like a little book, like a red book or something that went missing? Oh yes, she said, oh yes. Well, what happened to that? It was burned, she said. I believe it was burned, she says. You know, they took all of my things, so many things, and to the LA um, 
it looks like LA County Sheriff's Office and she said it was in like a, a evidence room like boxes of things and it looks like it was burned like it wasn't like it was incinerated it was what it looks like but I can't be sure so does it exist now oh no no it's long gone she says just a memory hmm some of my notes and records and things silly silly things like grocery lists and things are are what lives on isn't that isn't that something that seems so that seems so strange doesn't it not not the films not the the photographs as much not the pictures as much as the simple day-to-day -day things like the receipt for the grocery store i mean doesn't that just seem so silly so so silly hmm no i don't think it's silly mayor i think it's that then we can see you as a human being because you were such an icon, such an icon that people, you seemed like this superhuman, you know, this, this larger than life, like goddess energy that it, it's hard to relate to you and to other famous people too, I think. So things like a grocery list or a signature or anything like that, little handwritten notes are so, it makes you really relatable to us, like that you're a person too, just like us, like you wrote down your grocery list, that kind of thing, or things that you wanted to remember, you wrote notes and things like that, or that you had a diary or journal, like I would call it a journal, but you use the word diary, like that, you know, I think that makes you very relatable. You know, that's how you seem real then, like you were a real person, and I think that that's really special to have that. So I think that that's important for the viewers to know, very much so. Okay, all right. She says, okay. All right, so what else is I gonna ask you? Oh, the afterlife. I need to ask you about the afterlife. So, hmm. Hmm, this is kind of tricky. What should I ask her about the afterlife? So, oh. Well, I've talked, I've channeled you before. I have a playlist for Marilyn Monroe, so you can watch that if you want to know more details about um, her life or her death or her afterlife. You can look there at the playlist. But I'm wondering, so right the moment after your death, when your the life left your body, what was that like? And are you aware, do you have any kind of memory of like what happened with your body like when you went to the when the body went to the coroner's office and then when it went to the the funeral home for preparation and that kind of thing like are you aware of that do you have any, any memories of that and is that a normal thing like for spirits like how does that work do you know can you can you can you shed some light on that for us it is much like um it's much like going to sleep and then being wake oh um waking up like being startled awoke she's like awoken like startled and not kind of knowing where you are like wondering where you are like just it's sort of like i woke up in <laughs> in heaven <laughs> like that's what i want to say in heaven <laughs> but it wasn't like you think you know it wasn't like the movies really i just felt that i just i just felt so much my heart felt like it was home. And I know that sounds just corny, absolutely corny, but it's true. That's how it feels. That's, that, that's how it felt for me. And I would believe that it would feel like that way for other people too. So did you meet anybody in the afterlife? She says, my paternal grandmother. Okay. She was just a sweet old lady and she was so friendly. How did you know she was your grandmother? Oh, because she told me. And did you just like instinctively believe her? Or how does that work? Well, yes, it's quite easy to believe people in the afterlife when they, you, your spirit knows. It's just, there's no, there's no, um, there's no need to not trust anyone. And it's not, it's not like that. You, you just, you just know, you just know. And, that's probably the most real thing. You just know. It, it's like a feeling. It's like a feeling. It, it's not like something that I knew in my life. I, I never experienced anything like that. 
before. Not that I can think about. Not really. But I did, I did see my paternal grandmother, but, but it, I suppose you might think I was confused when I woke up in heaven, <laughs> but it's not really about, it wasn't really confusing. It just was very natural. It just seemed like that's that was just how it was supposed to be that day it didn't seem any different i felt very very peaceful i felt very very calm calm like i haven't felt before and my head wasn't all cloudy you know it wasn't fuzzy or foggy or anything you know when you have too much champagne and it gets a little fuzzy the next day it was not like that at all i felt better than i felt in a long time probably because i didn't have a body to be worried about so did you not did you like not have a body oh oh so, yes, I sort of did. It, and then you guys, it looks like a white kind of a robe thing and it's all like glowing, kind of iridescent, like you could like, it's like see-through, like the body. I don't know how to explain this. It sounds so weird to say this, but it's like an outline of her body. I can see her face and her hair, a silhouette of her. And um, just like a white, like a long nightgown or robe. And she just, just like that, that's how it looks. So, so she's showing me. So did people see this? It almost looks like a ghost kind of, it almost looks like you're not fully spirit yet. Um, about three days, she said. It took me about three days to get used to things, but it wasn't hard. It wasn't, it didn't hurt or there was no pain or it wasn't painful or anything. It wasn't like I was, I wasn't struggling. I don't want people to think that I did. I wasn't worried or there, there was no emotion that was negative. There was nothing negative at all. It was just quite a relief actually. So did people see your spirit? That's a good question. I would like to know that. I'm sure the viewers would like to know that. Oh yes, you'd have to be blind not to see it. So you did, you like showed up, like she's showing me walking from the building where, um, wherever the like, mortuary places like wherever the place the funeral home where she was like her body was prepared into like this um okay so i'm seeing like i think it's hollywood forever cemetery that's what it looks like to me yes it does because it's got the big peak into the actual chapel itself and i can see her standing in the chapel right by joe he looks like he's like just down like his hands are here and he's just looking down and she's like standing right next to him and then there's a time when there's like six or eight people no about six right in front by the by her casket and he's one of them and she's right there like she's right next to him and she's like right by the her head and so you could see her like if anybody was psychic they would have clearly seen and it does feel like he knew that she was there he could sense her and it also feels like she it feels like she didn't go, she didn't leave. Like if her body left that building to get prepared or anything, you know, cause I think she was in like a crypt kind of a thing. I can't, I don't know what they're called, but um, I know she's like an, on a wall at that cemetery, but she's saying after that, she stayed in that, that um, like the chamber, she calls it like the, the a beautiful, um, chapel-like place. She stayed there for quite some time, she said, and she would walk around out there. Do you still do that now? Oh, from time to time. Sometimes I will, from time to time. Just to see, you know, just to see. Things change so much, you know, over the years, they just change so, so much. Mm -hmm. They certainly do. Yes, they do. Interesting. So are you, would you say you're at peace in the afterlife? Oh, yes. She says, I know it looks like I had, um, you know, a tragic life or difficult, hard life, but I, I was so grateful. She says, I'm so grateful and very blessed to have the life that I had. And she, you guys, she's not at unrest. She's not like struggling. Um, what are you doing in the afterlife? I mean, I know that your spirit is in, um, I know that you're, geez, how do I say this? Hmm. 
let's let's go to this place let's ask you so what is one of your roles in the afterlife when you show up as a guide for someone or you're helping someone in their lives what is your like job do you have a theme or something that you focus on she says oh people who, uh, those who have been through hard times she says i'll help those who have uh, have been through hard times yes she's very attached to children i can see that so anyone that's lost a child or that kind of thing she would really oh, my gosh, she would be right there for that mother if they wanted her to help. And what about other like actresses or people in the film industry, actors, actresses? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. I've had many, I've had so many conversations. She says like consults <laughs> with especially actresses, aspiring actresses. Yes, I have. Yes. Yes, and I'm happy, I'm happy to help. So anyone can just ask you to come in and chat with you. The best way, she says, the best way is the writing. She says, in a journal, if you write, she says, I'll respond. She says, you might have a dream about me, you might have a thought about me, but writing is a really good way and she's like and you know it Bridget you know it I'm like yes I do know it because that's what I do in my psychic life coaching work I'm like hey use a journal write 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 you guys it's a great healing and connection and great 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 way to connect with your intuition and your heart and to heal and to clear and to connect it's just oh great and it's free just get a pen and notebook <laughs> All right. Hey, thanks, Marilyn. I appreciate you so much. She's like, oh, lovely chatting with you, Bridget. Lovely. I'd love to talk with you. I know. I'd love to visit with you, too. All right. So, viewers at Above Life Channel, thank you so much for being here with Ms. Marilyn Monroe in the afterlife. I hope that we've been able to inspire your spirit and fill you with hope. Because remember, the purpose here is to remind you that this is your life. This is your life now, so live it. Just live it. Thanks so much for watching.